Hey, I'm Steven, and welcome to Electronic Drum School by Sunhouse. In this edition, we'll be looking at effects, what they are, and how you can use them. I'll be working with sensory percussion and our built-in effects, but what you'll learn should also be relevant to effects and other pieces of software. Okay, let's dive in. The first thing we should go over is what is delay? How do we use it? Uh, what are the important parameters? How can we use it artistically? Um, so yeah, let's talk about that. What is delay? What is delay? What is delay? What is delay? Delay is just repeats. Um, it's just echoes um, is, is what, what it is. Um, and in sensor percussion, we have uh, the I'm using delay as a pad effect here. I just uh, added a delay effect. Um, and we are on the kit um, Acedia, uh, and we're using the Celesta sound from the Acedia kit, which without delay sounds like this. Let me bypass that. So kind of a nice Celeste sound. Um, okay, and so now uh, delay, the important parameters are time, feedback, level and mix and we'll we'll get into all of that um and everything else is just various flavors that um are important but um yeah uh my favorite happens to be this oil can delay um and there'll be more about that in the blog post that accompanies this um so uh this time parameter what does this do this sets the time uh between each um each repeat so um if i hit uh the, uh, if I set it low, it's going to be pretty fast delay, so only like 230 milliseconds between each, uh, between each repeat. Let's turn the feedback up. We'll talk about the feedback in a minute. Can we hear that? And now, if I set it to be long, and one really cool thing about this time parameter, um, let's go ahead and use this uh, timbre controller, center to edge timbre controller, it sounds really cool if you can control it with something. Um, so right now I just dragged this center to edge timbre controller to the time parameter and uh, as I get close to the center it's going to be very fast and as I play out to the edge it will be a very long in between the delays. You'll hear this cool pitchy effect I think. I always like that, um, and I like it. You can do some fun stuff like that if you keep both uh, the range pretty quick. It can also sound pretty cool. Great. So, what about this feedback parameter? We I I talked about it a little bit before, um, but it just um, sets the amount of time the delay repeats. Um, so. Uh, if I set it here, the delay is just going to repeat one time. And let me set the, uh, let me, I'm going to go ahead and bypass this, uh, this time controller. I'm going to set it to be kind of long so that you can hear it. Okay, so. Yep, just happens once. And then the more you pull it in, the more that it happens. Cool, and so if you put it up high, it's going to repeat a lot. And there are some delay units that uh, just will repeat ad finitum, um, but uh, this one um, does not. But if we set it, I think if we set it to this one, it'll just keep repeating over and over and again, and it'll even build into itself. Some delays, um, not sensory percussion delays will actually feed back to the point of uh, of actual feedback of of uh, what do we what do we call that? It's an infinite feedback loop. Um, in sensory percussion, uh, there's a guardrail that won't let you do that because that uh, can get very very chaotic, um, and it was just a choice. Uh, I really like this oil can delay the best. Um, okay, uh, level is also important. So that's just how loud are the delays. So if they're way down here, it's going to be very quiet. And then you can raise up the volume. There are the delays actually louder than the um, than the initial. Take a listen. And then mix, of course, is the amount of 
delay. So if I set this to 100%, you won't even hear the initial hit. You just heard it from the microphone of the mesh head. So I typically like it to be here. Um, a cool like radio effect that you can do is uh, you can drag an LFO um, to time like we like we did uh, with the timbre controller um, and uh, set it to be pretty fast and just in the low range like I mentioned before let's do pretty high feedback um, and uh, yeah let's turn the mix up a bit let's see how this sounds I always think of that as sort of like tuning a radio kind of goofy um, but there's a there's a maybe a right place. Let's see how this sounds on um, on a different sound. So um, if uh, if we're on this floor tom sound, um, let's go ahead and uh, paste that effect with controllers so it has that uh, silly um, radio effect, uh, and let's see how that sounds. Well, yeah, it's a bit much, but um, yeah, delay is great. Okay. So uh, next on the, the docket is um, filters. So um, what are filters? How can we use them? Um, and uh, yeah, uh, so filters, um, when referring to an audio, is uh, just going to filter out some of the frequencies. So we have things called low-pass filters, high-pass filters, um, and uh, a low-pass is going to let the lows pass, and a high-pass is going to let the highs pass through. So um, if if you've got a low-pass filter, um, it's going to uh, cut um, any any highs. Um, really, just uh, cut them right out. Just like, um, let me show you an demonstration on um, an EQ here. So EQs actually have filters built in. EQs are just uh, filters that are uh, stacked on top of each other. So we have, uh, it's called a high cut in this, is the same thing as a low pass filter. High cut, low pass are the same thing. Um, and uh, you can see here, um, this is what, let's see, if we set the, low pass filter to 800 and then we set this high cut filter to a around 800 it should sound approximately the same so here's the sound with no filter let's take some of that feedback off and maybe make this a little shorter okay uh one more time with uh this is completely unfiltered a little bit less mix Cool. Um, so this is with uh, this filter. Cool. And this should sound pretty much exactly the same. Let's listen to that again. Yep, so pretty much identical. So you can see what's happening. Um, when you drag this uh, low pass down, that's what's happening. The high frequencies are up here, um, and we could do the exact opposite if we switch this to low cut. And uh, that literally w is just the same thing as um, a high pass filter. Low cut and high pass are the same thing. Um, so let's take a listen. Uh, let's see, so 800, let's set this also to be 800. or approximately, so these two things should, it should sound kind of like an old radio. Yep, pretty similar. So yes, uh, high pass filter sounds like uh, an old radio or like old clock radio speakers, as they say. Um, and uh, one cool thing you can do with it is uh, 
tie it to buzz rolls. This is one of my favorite uh, sensory percussion techniques. Um, but I'm going to set a speed controller that is uh, only going to be sensitive to buzz rolls. So nothing happens up here, and then it shoots up to the top if you play a play a buzz roll. Um, and I'm going to drag that to both cutoff and resonance. So let's see how that sounds. And I'm going to because resonance is. I like to define it as like sharpness. It's um, if we uh, go over here to this multiband EQ again, um, we, it uh, it really is um, just this Q. So this is what's happening to the to the signal when um, when you have resonances. It's just a, creating a high peak right at that cutoff, and that's a very sharp sound. Um, resonance and Q mean the exact same thing. Um, okay, so what I did here is I dragged a uh, buzz roll speed controller to the cutoff and the resonance. So let's let's hear how this sounds. So it's going to sound very normal until I play a buzz roll. And let's add a little bit of smoothing on both of those parameters so that it just kind of shoots up a little bit nicer, just a bit. I like this amount of smoothing. Whoops. Yeah, that's great. Um, and it probably sounds really good in front of this reverb. So we want we want it going through the filter before it hits the reverb, maybe even before it hits the delay. Let's see how that sounds. Let's put that resonance a bit higher now. Cool. Yeah, here's something I've never actually really tried before, but let's see how it sounds. I'm going to set this to bandpass. So what a bandpass does, if we look at our EQ again, um, let's set it to bandpass. Um, so this is what a bandpass filter looks like. So it's cutting um, on the lows and the highs and just letting one band pass through. Um, and so if we were to set the the resonance here, that's what, that's what it's doing. Um, so uh, same, same settings. I don't actually have no idea how this is going to sound. It's okay. Um, maybe if we uh, take the take the range in a bit, and maybe yeah, same with the Q. So the Q and the um, the filter frequency. So let's see how that sounds. Yeah, maybe maybe that's not uh, what we want. Let's see how peak sounds. Yeah, I think I like high pass the best with this technique, with a with a wider range, something like that. Cool. Um, one really cool thing you can do with EQ. Let's bypass that. Um, is uh, create this trickly effect that I really quite love. Um, and so what you do is uh, you create a uh, LFO. Um, we're gonna, it's, it's gonna be uh, multiband trickles, I guess is what I'm gonna call this. Um, and so uh, I'm gonna set it to random rather than sine wave. So it's just picking a random spot and we're gonna drag this LFO to uh, a, a frequency band. Okay, so you can, now you can see it's kind of jumping all over everywhere. Let's add a little smoothing so we can see it. Yep, okay, so you're looking at that, uh, what is that, the third band? Yeah, band number three is now moving around. Let's make sure that it doesn't go too low. Okay, now let's create another LFO. And uh, let's go ahead and drag this LFO to um, gain. Okay, and we want this to now be mostly high. We can make it go a little bit low maybe. But so, yep, all right, so now it's traveling. Let's put a little bit of smoothing on that as well. Cool. Okay, and sometimes we can put an LFO on Q, but I like the Q to be really high, the, the resonance to be really high for this. And we're gonna probably end up having to do it with more than one band. Um, but uh, let's see how this sounds just as is. So not so trickly yet. 
Um, so let's go ahead and add some more LFOs um, to different bands. Same thing. Um, this one, maybe I'll set this one to sign. We'll see. Sometimes a pattern is nice um, rather than completely random. Pick a random, it just should be a bell. Um, so it shouldn't be on shelf or, or, um, or any of the other uh, settings. Okay, so we'll set this one fast. Let's make sure they don't pile on top of each other. Uh, so if one's going to be um, in the high range, let's put the other one in the relatively low range. So something like that. So now you can see band number two is kind of staying out of band number three's way. Um, and it's going very fast. Maybe that'll be cool. Let's leave it fast. Um, okay, and now uh, let's go ahead and create another... LFO set to random, um, and let's go ahead and drag that to game, and then we'll set this Q really high, and um, we'll set the gain to be more boost than cut. Okay, so if I'm not mistaken, this should create kind of a cool trickly effect. Let's try... Um, Let's try keeping it a little bit higher up like that, a little bit slower maybe, because that wasn't as trickly as we wanted it to be, or I wanted it to be. Maybe even a little faster. Both of them going fast. And let's set this one to random. There it is. There's those trickles. And now in combination with this buzz roll, cool. Cool. All right, so that's a, that's a little trickly EQ effect that I quite like. Um, let's see how it sounds on um, some other. Uh, so let's see how it sounds here. Paste effect with controllers. Okay. We can see it's doing the exact same thing. Cool. Um, and yeah, why not on the snare too? So here's what the snare sounds like. Let's go ahead and paste with controllers. Yeah, that's fun. Um, okay, what's next? Oh, okay, so let's head back to this cool um, uh, Celeste sound. And one other cool speed controller effect I like is this 12AX7 tube. Um, we can really make it um, so 12AX7 tube, what is it? It is a, um, amp simulation. It's simulating a tube amp. So with a lot of drive, uh, so think guitar distortion, um, especially kind of like the old timey, uh, 50s, 60s, 70s, um, before solid state amps came out. Um, and, uh, so if we just hear what the distortion sounds like, so that's nice. Um, but Let's take that speed controller we created before and let's go ahead and drag it to, let's see how it sounds on mix. So if, um, if without buzzing, it just sounds normal. And then when we buzz, let's create it so that it's even more sensitive to, so that's gonna shoot up even, even higher. That's cool. Um, and let's go ahead and move that smoothing so that it behaves more like a knob. Okay, so let's hear what it sounds like without, and let's go ahead and get rid of these trickles for a minute. So no more trickles, and without this uh, tube effect. And now with it. It's a little bit more... Um, uh, distorted. Uh, another way to make this more um, distorted is to add this clipper effect. We're also going to have it do the same thing. So clipper is just, um, what clipper does is it 
uh, takes everything that um, goes uh, above, it sets a threshold, anything that goes above this ceiling, uh, this minus 12 or whatever, um, is going to be uh, clipped. So um, it will be uh, distorted at, a, at above that uh, um, threshold. So what we can do is we can uh, go ahead and make it so that it's, uh, oh, I think we would want it this way. So that um, basically nothing happens when you're playing normal. And then when you buzz, yeah, it gets really, really distorted. Let's add some smoothing. Oh, whoops. Um, I thought I was doing that right. Uh, let's sw let's switch this. I guess I I guess I flipped it around. Yeah, that's what we want. Cool. So that's a lot of fun. All right, so what's next? Oh, next we, I wanted to talk about modulation effects. So what are modulation effects and how can we use them? Modulation effects in, in uh, sensor percussion software are found under this sun mods, and they are chorus, flanger, and phaser. And what these are, these are modulating, so um, moving at a rate, um, delays that are very, very short. So 20 milliseconds or less. So they are just kind of um, uh, accord in accordance with this rate knob. Um, it, uh, it sets the amount that the delays are, are modulating, are, are moving. Um, so uh, I think chorus doesn't sound that great on um, a lot of tonal stuff. Sometimes it sounds good but I really like fan, flanger and phaser on tonal stuff like this. We'll listen to some chorus on, um, on uh, the, um, the more percussive stuff. Okay, so uh, let's take a listen to um, this phaser. Uh, so let's hear it. I took away the distortion, even on buzzes. Maybe we'll put it back, but um, so that was just the sound as it is. And so now if we just throw a phaser on it, here's what that sounds like. Sometimes you'll hear it called like tone swirling. Stages is the amount of layers, the amount of delays. Um, so let's set that pretty high. And um, depth is, uh, is how deep the, the modulation goes and rate is important. And feedback is just like in the delay before. Let's set that stereo high too. Um, Very cool. Uh, flanger sounds different. Love that, love that. Um, let's go ahead and add these back in. Cool. Um, okay, and uh, like I said, let's take a listen to what uh, chorus sounds like, but um, a lot of times on tonal stuff it can sound pretty dissonant, so let's l take a listen. I quite like that. Um, let's take away these, uh, this EQ, see how that sounds. And yeah, that got a little bit dissonant. Um, but yeah, I like it. A fast rate is gonna sound pretty weird. All right, so let's take a listen to what chorus sounds on, um, on like a more percussive thing. So let's take that away and go paste effect. Um, whoops, let's do it on the whole drum. Paste effect with controllers. Okay, so this is what a tom sounds like um, with chorus. Let's take that feedback way back, take the rate down. Sounds nice. Um, yeah, it sounds a little bit bigger. Um, it's a little bit fantastic. It's not all that realistic, but it, it can be really cool. One really cool thing I've found is uh, 
let's go ahead and copy this and we're gonna put it on the snare drum now. Here's what the snare drum sounds without it. Let's go ahead and throw it on. Pretty cool. Um, one really cool thing you can do uh, with it though is uh, you can create a velocity controller and let's set it so that it's not very sensitive so that it's not gonna kick in until you play pretty hard. Um, it's not going to be doing anything until on those ghost notes and let's set it uh, to the mix so and let's make it pretty nice and big um, so on ghost notes it's going to turn the um, turn the chorus off and but then when I play hard Pretty cool, pretty fun. Um, definitely fantastic and out there. Um, great. Uh, and oh, and phaser on um, on drums like these on a percussive sound uh, is what's happening in uh, the Jimi Hendrix uh, song called "Axis Bold as Love." Um, on Mitch Mitchell's um, drums, uh, the engineer, I believe. Eddie Kramer um, put on a, uh, a phaser on that last section of the song. Um, in that last section of the song, it's uh, almost certainly a phaser, um, sounding kind of like, yeah, you can hear it, and there's that fill. Um, go and listen to that if you if you have don't know what I'm talking about. Anyways, yeah, I love uh, I love modulation effects. Okay, so one really cool thing that you can do is uh, run effects in parallel. What does that mean, in parallel? Um, that just means using these send channels over here. We, we have a completely dry sound, and then we send it using these knobs, send it over a bus into uh, an effects chamber, and um, we can put any effect on that. So we have a, dry, a fully dry sound, so we have a fully dry sound and a uh, wet sound. Um, so the reason we put reverb on ascend is because it's more true to life. If, if you don't have a truly dry sound, um, it's like the reverb existed on the sound before the sound, or sorry, as the sound was being created. So um, that's why you need a fully dry sound, um, a, a fully dry channel uh, to create uh, a chamber. Um, so uh, while it, it is totally valid and cool to use it um, like we did here on, um, on this, this uh, drum with, uh, with the reverb just on the sound as it is, not on a send channel, uh, the more true to life version would be to have a, uh, a dry channel and an effects chamber, um, which is what we're doing here. So I just created this reverb, I'll just do it again, I'll create this reverb on send channel number two. I'm gonna pull the mix all the way up um, and uh, let's make the decay the the amount of time it takes to fade amount of time it takes to fade into nothing um, uh, let's turn that up to like two seconds that's normally nice we're gonna this is just these are just um, the filters within the delay uh, sorry within the reverb and uh, let's make it a big room and then let's really make this uh, this snare drum wet let's take a listen to it before with no reverb Nice, and then now let's listen to it after. Cool. And just to prove that um, that send channels are, are worthwhile, let's let's take a listen to to this again with the send channel. Now let's go ahead and mute the send channel, but put this effect, copy this effect, over just to the drum itself. sounds different. So let's let's take a listen to that again. Okay, so now muting the send channel and then um, and that enabling that same reverb on uh, the effect. So there's a little difference there, definitely. Not as full. Okay. Um, so another great uh, way to um, 
to use a parallel effect is compression. Compression works great on uh, in parallel. But what is compression? Before we get into that, what is compression? Compression is um, squashing the dynamic range, the difference between the louds and the softs, um, squashing that into um, into a smaller dynamic range. So with makeup gain, um, compression really just makes the uh, quiets as um, as loud as the louds. So if you play quietly, it's going to be just as loud um, as the loud. Without makeup gain turned on, um, it uh, it will make the louds as quiet as the quiets. So typically we leave makeup gain on because we want to squash the dynamic range into the upper range rather than the lower range. Um, but uh, so um, and ratio is how much of uh, the compressor and threshold is what what's the highest peak for the uh, for the compressor to kick in. So um, let's go ahead and mute this to start out just to get a good idea of what what this snare sounds like. Okay, and so now with the compression. Definitely a lot louder as a as in parallel. Um, this is called parallel compression. Um, typically, uh, what I had heard, although I've heard it just both ways, I've heard this called New York compression, where you take some of the mids out uh, using an EQ. Um, although some people use uh, New York compression and parallel compression interchangeably. I've always called it to be New York compression. I've always, uh, or I had a teacher that told me that it has to have the mid sucked out. Okay. Thanks for joining me for this edition of electronic drum school by Sunhouse. And to go with this video, we'll have a blog post, which will cover some of the same material so that you can follow along that way. Okay. I'll see you with the next one.